most of my adult career was as a clinical social worker. Oh. I worked in healthcare settings as an LICSW, which is a licensed independent clinical social worker. My last position was at Children's Hospitals and Clinics in Minneapolis. I worked with children and families around a variety of issues. I always dabbled in art, um, but I saw an opportunity to create art full time. So I've been an artist for about 13, 14 years. And I primarily started um, painting acrylic paint on canvas. I have a studio in an arts building in Northeast Minneapolis, uh, the Northrop King building. I painted primarily in my home studio for many, many years, but maybe five, six years ago, I had an opportunity to share space with a glass artist. I decided to challenge myself to use some non-traditional materials and non-traditional ways of presenting the work. So the title of the exhibit, Material Matters, was an easy title because it's really very much about the materials. Um, the various pieces in the show incorporate a variety of materials, everything from canvas, but not just stretched canvas over stretcher bars, but remnant canvas. So the piece behind me here is an old tarp, for instance, and some of these pieces on the side, I don't know if you can see them, they came from deconstructed tote bags, duffel bags, awnings. So I looked at the stuff and materials of everyday life, the kinds of things that are always around us and ways that I might put them in a new context and give them a second life. Many of the pieces were sourced at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. And so it was fun to gather all of these materials and think of ways that I might repurpose them. This is a piece that can be viewed from either side. And, um, you know, it's, it's color, texture, shapes and forms, a painting and also a sculpture. I wasn't sure when I was painting it how I would display it. Again, this is a piece that has multiple options, but I decided to hang it on a bar like this. You know, definitely it is canvas, but its previous life was as a tarp. Mm -hmm. And so I was drawn to the texture, um, the raw energy of it as a substrate, and it's got grommets, it's got some soiling and discoloration. Normally tarps, you know, they cover a wood pile or they provide some type of shelter or protection, but I thought, I can paint on that too. And if it does end up covering a wood pile again at some point, it'll be a very unique wood pile in the neighborhood. This one is called Remnant 7. I think the first 10 pieces or so, I just called Remnant 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, but some later pieces I created last year, I gave some titles. I first became interested in using books for art making when I saw an exhibit in Chicago many, many years ago. Um, and the artist painted on the front side of book covers um, and she painted very delicate, realistic birds. And, you know, it, it was easy to see that these book covers, many anyway, not all, are covered with either linen or cotton or some textured fabric, which is very much like canvas. And mm -hmm. so it is glued onto cardboard. And so it's, it's very much like a canvas. And then I became interested in the insides of the book covers as well. These are all natural uh, insides of book covers. I have not painted any of them. So as I created a lot of these pieces, I wanted to keep something about the piece from its previous life. Um, the linen book covers can be actually stripped off of the cardboard. 
I did not paint these. These are all the natural colors of the book covers. In some cases, I, I used the front cover of the linen, and in some t cases, the inside, where you can see a little bit of the cardboard. You know, there, there's no end, really, to what one can use as a collage material. These four pieces here are primarily utilizing some of these spine components. These are mixed media on panel and these are some of the papers from the inside cover of the book. This piece is called uh, Talking Leaves and uh, again these are the stripped linen covers from books. In a book I read, David Abrams, The Spell of the Sensuous, there was a little section on how thousands of years ago when cultures that didn't have a written language came in contact with cultures that did have a written language, they saw it as such a mysterious thing that someone was looking down on, I'm guessing maybe it was some writing or script or pictures on a leaf because the culture without written language referred to those as talking leaves. I have this sense that they could they could blow like leaves. Mm -hmm. um, there's kind of an aerial quality to them. We don't know what words or messages these books contained at one time, but I, I still felt this was a way of honoring that they were books at one time. Yep. Uh, maybe the messages that they once contained are still somewhere out there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Well, these three pieces, these are um, technically called decollage. So collaging, of course, is uh, applying papers or books. This, of course, did involve that process, but then it's called decollage or decollage because some of the paper is then stripped away. Um, so I did a lot of that intentionally. These three pieces represent three different trips that I've taken. This one was Chile, this Paris, and this one uh, Japan. So I tend to collect travel materials, posters, things that I pick up on the streets right. during my travels, including some things that fall off of poles or billboards or kiosks and yeah. things like that. So to me, all three are called urban archaeology. So it's urban archaeology one, two, and three because of the layering and then the uh, peeling back. For me, it's like going through history or excavating in an archaeological way. Even when I paint, I tend to paint layers and then I uh, sand or scrape and I, I try to pull out something from an under layer back up to the surface. Yeah. These are three life vests. Uh, they might even be child size, I'm not sure. But I, I looked at them as potential substrates. Um, they're not canvas per se, but they had a nice textural quality. And again, I decided to give them a new life by making them into art. And the title for the piece is Keep Afloat. And again, that was easy because one of these life vests is actually, the label on it says, oh here. Keep afloat. Keep afloat. But I strung them together. I thought, you know, this is a way of um, showing the interconnectedness of all of us. You know, more generally, we, we all want to keep our heads above water um, in, in all of our uh, ways of living and coping. So yeah, I think just coincidentally, it has a little more meaning now, I think, right. than than when I created it. These are two by fours, which a friend cut in regular sizes for me, and I decided to create art with these by 
um, gessoing the wood and then I applied a concrete cement. Gesso is a product, it's, it's mostly used on uh, canvas before you paint it okay. and it keeps the paint from bleeding through onto the back side of the canvas. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a barrier but it also creates uh, what's called tooth. It, it, it's something for the paint to grab onto. In these pieces here I've collaged pieces onto a background. But again I, I wanted to leave some of the elements that suggested their previous life. These two pieces here were once duffel bags, so they have the, the zippers here. This one is called Touch of Autumn. I was primarily influenced by the colors that I ended up choosing for the piece. This one, Emergence. Um, this one I painted when I was in Santa Fe last year. And this one, bedrock, because there's the suggestion of rocks. Titling pieces for me is a challenge, but it's a challenge that I like. Um, generally, I like to title things with a positive title, but in some cases, it's just something that kind of comes through in the piece. I certainly didn't invent uh, painting on non-traditional materials, but, um, it, uh, it, it's, it's a fun uh, venture after having painted on, you know, stretched canvas for so long.